Hey gang, it is December 4th, 2018, and I guess this is Brooklyn Pony Part 25. Um, I know you've been following along and anticipating more videos, and, I, and I'm trying to get stuff together. Um, some of the stuff I've been doing, I, I guess in my mind, I, I see it as kind of um, not that exciting. Uh, you don't see a whole ton of progress, like when I was, you know, assembling the car and different things. But I'll go over some things uh, that I have done to the car at this point. And I want to show you some other things um, that, I'm, that I'm doing today. Um, it's been, I know it's been a while since I've done an update. Hey, do we have any more um, 180 grit? <laughs> okay, <laughs> forget you saw that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could clone ourselves though? We could get so much more done, or at least hopefully get more done. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, I'll just show you what I've been working on, uh, you know, working on this driver's side of the car primarily, trying to get things, you know, in a proper shape, and uh, I'll go over some of that. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've done, I, I just, to me, I'm, and maybe it, I shouldn't think this way, but it, it seems kind of uh, drawn out and kind of boring, but uh, there may be some of you that want to see some of this, and I'll, I'll probably try to do more uh, video work on the uh, passenger side. But uh, today, I'm going to show you this deck lid that I'm working with. Uh, the original deck lid that came with the car, once it was blasted, I found that it was in pretty rough shape. Um, the, uh, the metal was very thin. Uh, there was all kinds of pitting all through it, and it just really wasn't worth working on, in my opinion. Uh, the deck lid that I have is an original um, that I got a hold of. And it, uh, it needs some work. It's got a few dents and dings, but the dents are minor uh, in comparison, uh, in my opinion. So I'm going to work on that deck lid, um, and I'll show you that. I've already uh, took it down to bare metal and epoxy primed it so that I can start working it back up with a little filler um, or with some filler and uh, get it to the right shape. So I'll go over that a little bit and hopefully uh, you can use some of that information. I know I've shown videos on doing body work and that sort of thing um, and this will be probably very similar to those but it is in relation to the Brooklyn Pony car. Okay I'll start up front here. I know I've shown this in a previous video when I did the update but uh, I've done some more work on the fender and the quarter and I was concerned with, you know, fitment between the uh, fender and the um, cowl. And that, that's worked out really well. It's very smooth. There was, a, I had a little bit of filler through here simply because it showed evidence of a little distortion. So I wanted to fill that up. As you can see, I've got some filler work going on here. Um, this is from where I added on, uh, some, welded on some material to get the gap to look nice and I'm very happy with that and same way up here just just to clean up these areas just a little bit I'm very happy with the gap as I've shown before um, no no issues with that on this door again I'm very happy with the gap um, it did take a little bit of work up here simply because to make this gap in my opinion as true as I, I want it um, I added a little bit of metal onto the edge of the door and then ground it and that took care of any issues with that so I'm very happy with that um, let's see I have applied some seam sealer I know it's kind of hard to see but there's seam sealer down here where the quarter meets the rocker and I also put seam sealer in the door jam all the way down to the bottom there and back here after putting a uh, spraying epoxy on it I could see there's a little metal deflection right here so that's why there's filler that'll get sanded and again I put um, seam sealer in there and on this location here where the overlap is and back here seam sealer you know you, you want to get all these areas taken care of as best as you can um, there will be more added later on. I also put seam sealer on the inside all the way up and I will add more down in the corner. I know it's hard to see but way down there I'll probably add more down in the bottom 
Um, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how all this is looking. Um, you can see here, I did not put any paint or primer yet on this extension, but it had some deep areas in this location. You know, just from years and years of being around, <laughs> you know, this stuff happens. But if I place that on the car, my shapes are very consistent, and I'm, I'm very happy with that. So, more on that later. But um, what I wanted to show you is this deck lid. Now, again, this has already been uh, was taken to bare metal and epoxy primed inside and out. So, very happy with the condition of it. There's no rust through or, or rust anywhere. So, it's very, very solid. And, uh, and I'm really happy about that. Um, there are a couple of dents. There's like one here, one there. I forget where the other one was. There's a very shallow one up here. But again, uh, as I've shown in the previous videos where I've done this kind of repair work, I'll probably end up coating the whole thing. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to be an issue and be, you know, this thick with filler. It'll be very, very thin but it takes care of any of those little dips and shallow spots and dents. That's probably the worst one, and that's really not that deep, but I'll get more into that. Um, otherwise, it is an original panel. Uh, as I pointed out probably in, I know in previous videos, it be hard to see, but this has all the original, you can tell, little spot welds. And I've shown... Um, in a, I think it was a light blue Mustang. When I put a new deck lid on, that whole deck lid you could you could twist it just about any shape you wanted because the skin on those replacement panels is just folded over and then it's not welded at all. So you can actually flex the outer shell on the inner shell. And usually when I get to that point with a new one, I will spot weld the perimeter just like the factory did on this so that it's, it's rigid once I get the shape that I want. So anyway, uh, let me get started on doing the prep work on this. I've already kind of gone over this with a, um, a Scotch-Brite, but I'll go over it again and progress from there. All right, so I thought I would conduct an experiment today, and I, ha I actually got my wireless mic working. Um, we'll see if this works, but I'm gonna go over this deck lid just to show you with red scotch bright and that's just very fine I'm making sure I get down in those little scratches or little dents so that the filler will definitely Hang in there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, I'm gonna go over to my bench, get some paper towels and some Windex. this air dry for a little bit. Now I will say that I'm using Evercoat Rage Ultra as my body filler of choice at this point. Uh, this is left over from the last can that I had. This is the other can is a new can. So that's what I'll be using. And I'm going to mix in some hardener. Now, of course, experience will dictate how much hardener you're going to use. Um, and really, it just leads to how much time you have between actually getting it mixed and applying it before it starts to cure on you. So 
Um, as you can see, I'm just folding this over and I'm gonna mix it all in until I have no color streaks. And I stress again that I use these uh, clean sheets because you can tear off the top one and you have a new sheet ready to go. Some people will use cardboard. Um, I, growing up, we used to use uh, a wing window from an old car because it was glass and you could mix up on it, let it dry and just scrape it back off and clean it up. But this is much simpler and much more efficient. And really, you know, I'm, I'm concerned with the deep areas, but like I said, I'm gonna coat the whole thing. And this is gonna take several passes of material to make this happen. As I stated, this is not really all that thick. Um, you can really see some of the color of the paint even showing through, which is what I want. Because again, I'm not, I'm not trying to cover it up with a big thick layer of this stuff. I'm just trying to build a consistent flat shape all the way across. If there's any kind of little little low spots or anything, this will take care of that. So as you can see, I just have a little bit to do in the middle, and uh, then I can start looking at sanding, once it hardens up, of course. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the whole area coated, and to do some block sanding, I'm gonna use some 3M 100 grit paper and a Dura block. So I'm just gonna wrap that around. And the idea with doing, um, and the idea of doing block sanding is a lot of people just think it's because you're using a block, that's why it's called block sanding, but it's also a technique. You wanna do basically a crisscross pattern as you go across your project. And what that does, it eliminates lines like if you're just going straight across like this you can dig in with a corner and that'll cause problems but by going crisscross you eliminate that you know cross hatch pattern I know it's kind of hard to see, 
but you can you can see the difference in color and texture it's where it's smoothing out I know it's the color doesn't show that much of a difference but this is the where that one little low spot was you can see the side the area around it is starting to smooth out at least I hope you can see that it's really hard to show you with this um, the color of this filler so I'm going to keep on sanding this down and I'll show you the progress Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of color vari variation at this point. All the dark spots, the prominent dark spots, are the highest point of the panel. Um, th the shaded areas, that's where the, the filler was getting thin, and that's where I'm stopping. I don't want to sand all the way through that and then have problems with highs and lows. Um, the really dark spot, I'll show you over here when I in a second, but yeah, there's a good one. This really dark spot, that is where I sanded almost through the epoxy. So that, again, that, that is another high spot relative to the flatness. So when I look at that, you can look on, on the underside and feel around maybe and determine if that's in a braced area or if it's in an open area to where you can take a body hammer and knock it down a little bit. Um, some of these, like they may be within that brace and even if you dolly on them or hammer on them you're not really going to move that metal very much if at all uh, without having to move that brace underneath so at this point uh, I'm going to circle what are the bad spots and I know it's hard to see but I'll, I'll show you a close-up later on and when I say bad spots you can see these are high so I already knew there was a low spot here so I'm going to circle that um, I know I can see with color variation there's a couple bad spots here so I'm going to circle those and then there's one right here very shallow very very shallow but you can see there's three points here that I'm already reaching uh, the high points of the metal so I can't just keep on sanding and that's the biggest thing when people do this sort of work they think they just got to keep on sanding and sanding and sanding you don't want to do that uh, i've said it before if you see bare metal you need to stop because you've already you can't go any deeper without removing more filler so all these shadow areas are the again the highest points on the panel um, there's other areas that are i mean this the rest of this feels just fantastic very smooth and there is some color variation here but that is just from the filler. That's nothing uh, where it's going to need uh, very, or may not need any filler. Uh, high build primer may take care of that little area. Uh, but again, there's just a couple areas, and I'll show you. First, let me back up and show you all the <laughs> sanding debris, and that's not uncommon. And I, as I mentioned before wear a dust mask you know try to protect yourself as much as you can um, but and again I'm trying to get it's really hard to see with it with the but there is some shading right here where you can see the the block didn't make contact um, there you can see a little more color variation very subtle one right there and a couple little ones right there 
and you can see there I've, I've actually contacted you know made uh, bare metal so um, for the most part this isn't all that uncommon you know these old panels they've been around I mean they've, this thing's over 50 years old you know people have dropped stuff on it or leaned on it the wrong way or something like that and it causes some variation in the shape so you know doing it this way where I'm, I'm covering the whole panel I'm gonna end up with a very smooth uh, panel when I'm done so at this point I'll probably scuff up the inside of these little holes uh, a little bit more. Take the 100 grit sandpaper and just put some scratches in this so that it's roughed up and apply some more filler to these areas. This area right here, uh, I could probably, let me see if I have, I, I think this area, it may be in the open enough that I can tap it down just a little bit. Yeah, that's in a brace. I can hear it when I hit it. Hear that over here? That's in the open. That's on a brace. So this isn't really going to want to move. Um, these other areas, I can try to knock them down just a little bit, and it may help some, but it's so close right now that it, it's really not worth it the way I look at it. So let me make, mix up some more uh, filler and take care of those other spots. Now again, I'm not digging very deep in this. And you want to blow out, blow out the dust? spread it out and then fold it over on itself seems to work pretty well for me so again I'm gonna come back to these areas trying to do is I actually want to connect these two since they're cl so close together so when I'm sanding I'm not fighting two edges if that makes sense I can work on making a, a, a rather larger uh, smooth transition that way Same thing up here, just easier. Okay, now I'll let this harden up and go back to sanding it back down. Well, I think I'm done with the block sanding. Um, as you can see, if you look carefully, the black pattern here is actually where the inner brace is. So, you know, over years of, uh, you know, closing the trunk lid and different things, um, that seems to have left quite the impression. So even though this whole thing is covered, it really doesn't have that much filler on it. You can see all these dark areas where, you know, it's coming through. Um, and I also did the, the uh, front edge or what would be the rear of the deck lid as well. And I'll show you that in just a minute, but um, I hope that was helpful. I know that people are wanting to see more stuff on this car and uh, I've done videos like this before 
and I, I hate to just kind of repeat myself, but um, I just want to show you where, where we're at on this. So uh, let me show you the, the front edge or what would be the rear as you look at it. And here you have a look from what would be the rear facing edge. And you can see I did the same thing with the filler, went over it. I want to make sure there's no dips and you know no high spots later on. I will come back and spray any bare metal with self-etch prior to applying my uh, PPG 2K high build. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's going to turn out super nice. Um, hopefully this is informative. Again, I don't like to repeat you know, too much of the stuff that I've done in the past, but um, I know that you all want to see more stuff, and I'm trying to get more out there for you. So, again, I hope this was informative. Hope you maybe you learned something from it, and you can use these techniques for your project as well. Um, if you'd be so kind, you know, throw a thumbs up on there, uh, like, share, subscribe, all those cool things, and as usual, thanks for watching. Hey, do we have any more um, 180 grit? Hey, do we have any more um, 180 grit? Hey, do we have any more um, 180 grit?